Ah, welcome. Today we are gathered here to celebrate the unholy union between Olivia and Edgar. I'm Ben Ulmer, and welcome to another LRR MTG Deck Deck. Excuse me, sir, I don't see your name on the guest list. <sighs> Look, weddings are cool, but what about those who didn't get invited? What about our slimy amphibious friends who maybe put on a little extra weight for meeting all the peasants that unknowingly wandered into the bog? Well, don't worry, my warty friends. We might not be feasting on blood and doing the Innistrad chicken dance, but we do get to join in the fun with our new friend Grawlnock the Omnivore. We've got some powerful shenanigans to show off, and while you might think I'm lying, you could trust me. I'm no amphibian. Ben, I will throw you out for real. That is strike one. So let's take a look at what we've got in a deck I'm calling It's Not Easy Being Green. Grawlnock is a 3-3 legendary frog for two green blue that reads, whenever a frog you control attacks, mill three cards. Whenever a permanent is put into your graveyard from your library, exile it with a croak counter on it. You may play lands and cast spells from among cards you own in exile with croak counters on them. So, Grawlnock is all about milling our own deck and turning it into what is essentially a second hand of cool permanence to play from exile. He also wants us to turn a lot of hoppy boys sideways to get that mill train chuggin, which is perfect because it turns out a lot of the frogs in Magic care about the graveyard. For example, Excavating Anarid and Anarid Bark Ripper are two chonky pals that have threshold, which means every time you mill a non-permanent card, you're still getting value. We've also got our new buddy, the Frog Hemoth. Not only will they shred your opponent's graveyard, they'll get bigger and gain you life for each non-creature card you exile. But what if you want even more frogs? Well, luckily for you, changelings like Realmwalker, Masked Vandal, Morit of the Frost, and Maskwood Nexus are all technically frogs. And even if you play creatures like Satyr Wayfinder, Wood Sage, or Cavalier of Thorns to help with the milling, there's always Omnibian, a 3-3 frog from OG Ravnica that taps to turn any creature into a frog for a turn. And if you're looking for a more long-term solution, enchantments like Xenograft and Arcane Adaptation will ensure all of your non-frogs become the good hoppy boys our Grawlnock wants. And on that note, while this is the perfect opportunity to jam all the frogs in the multiverse into one deck and go for tribal fun, I actually think this is a great commander deck to pack full of enchantments because Grawlnock will put any milled ones into exile so you can play them anytime. Enchantments like The Binding of the Titans and Oath of Druids help you mill your deck while also giving you that good, good value. Plus, Oath is symmetrical, so everyone will be happy. But if they don't like you getting free froggy friends, you can protect your board with shielding plaques or asceticism, giving your hoppers hexproof and your enemies a headache. Of course, setting up all this jank takes time, which is why you use Haze Frog to fog the board, and then have Species Gorger return it to your hand on our upkeep to use again. And if you sprinkle in a little Wilderness Reclamation, you can do whatever you want on your turn, then untap your lands on end step to hold up mana for the frog. The fr fro frog? The frog? Yeah, that's definitely strike two. Of course, this deck wouldn't be green without cards like Wild Growth, Utopia Sprawl, and Fertile Ground that ramp you into haymakers like Genesis Wave, which, by the way, works great in a deck where almost every card is a permanent. And because you're running so many enchantments, you're absolutely running staple enchantress cards like Eidolon of Blossoms, Enchantress's Presence, and Citizen Champion to really churn through your deck. You can even throw in one of my favorite cards, Protean Thaumaturge, who magically becomes your froggy friends when you play one of your many, many enchantments. It's like a reverse frog prince! Unless you like smooching frogs, then it's a regular frog prince. Since every deck needs removal, let's also add enchantments like Lignify, Frogify, and Song of the Dryads. Sure, they're not super strong black removal spells, but it's not easy being green. And if your opponent has removal, Plaxcaster Frogling is here to protect your froggos from anything spooky. And speaking of more frogs, maybe your opponent is a monster and is running Bornclax. 
guess what? Now you've got one too, thanks to Croaking Counterpart. Except that it's 10 times cooler because he's a frog. Now everyone's happy. And since we're already playing Simic, after all, why not? Why shouldn't I play Progenitor Mimic? Slam this bad boy down on the board and copy the best thing. Make more copies and win. Overall, Grawlnock looks like he's going to be a blast to play. His ability to essentially give you a second hand of cards in exile to play with makes him feel super unique and fun. Whether you choose to go all in on frog tribal or just build around enchantments, you'll never feel unhoppy. That's three, you're done. Hey, let's not jump to any conclusions. Final warning, Ben. What's wrong, Graham? Uh, this is really bugging me. Hey.